the whole of Malak, all of Malamut, the whole of Malak, Yame, Rakis, the whole of Gadol, Macarian Tios, the whole Eronai, the whole Elohim, Curios Tios Pantacrita, Curios Tios Pistos. Elda et Ehova, Yel Emuna Ehova, Ibas Leon Curios, Otios, Opanta Greta, Baslios, Baslion Kai Curios, Curio, Ehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal, Ehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Geber, El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos, Ton Christon is un ton Kurion. Kurion ni Mahagion Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gibra. Ehova Ishmal Kam, Ehova Shamma. Yel Nakum Yehova, Yel Nakum Yapa. Natsak Israel, La Shaker, Gava Gava. Triembos Yehova. Jesus Christos, Panta Greta, Gadol Gadol, Geber. Mora Rosh Nasa, Elohim Elohim, Ileilai Shalot, Yehovah Malak, Yehovah Malak, Olam Olam Ad, Yehovah Elohenu, Yehovah Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Geber. Zoan Logan Oga Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes, Dikayesune, and Jesus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa, Pantacreta, Gadol, Gadol, Giver. Ehova Ihe Elohim, Ehova Ihe Elohim. Ile Lae Shalot, Jesus Christos. Yehovah Malak, Gadol Gadol, Geber. Derek, Emunah Bakar, Mishfat, Shah. The Megalogai of Yahweh, El Elyon Elohim, is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the matter. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them, who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of this great and unique and valuable mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing why God created man in the sense that man shall not weep neither be the standards of sadness, but rather in the days of his grace he would really enjoy the life of which he has been given on this earth through his instructions on this earth. But the way how man is not able to enjoy the things designed by Lord God the Father clearly proves that Lord God is not happy with us. That's what we are able to read from Jeremiah 14, 17. The same thing what we have been able to look. Not to grieve or squelch or vex or lie or resist to Lord God the Holy Spirit, but rather to be controlled under the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. 
So dear brethren, thinking upon these things as the word of Lord God demands for us to learn, we shall come back and continue after this prayer what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of his glory in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of his word. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming into the marvelous grace of Lord to learn the truth. We don't deserve anything on this earth, O Lord, but have given us the best. Yet, O Father, we are still performing the same sin against sin, and we are able to grieve and squelch and vex and lie and resist to Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Let O Lord have given us this grace to realize and to understand that in nothing we shall be ashamed, but in everything, O Lord, through your word itself, we can come back and fulfill your marvelous glory. As we go and study the things, O Lord, which are prepared and kept for us on today's day to the past, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, sorry, Lord. Amen. So, dear brethren, when God made man, man was not designed for unhappiness, neither for any sorrow. But rather, man has been told to simply, humbly obey the demands of the word of Lord God and to enjoy the life of this youth. The illustration, if you can look upon Noah, he did not go to give reasons and say that he is not a man who is going to build a ship or is not acquainted to build a ship. It was commanded by the Lord of a God and he went to build it. Whether he would know the craft work of that, a work of making up the things pertaining to the standards of engineering realm of all the things over there, how to make up the wood, how to make it up to be patched so that water shall not come into it. When Lord God mandates, he simply obeyed it. Therefore, he has been counted as a man of righteousness unto the Lord. The same thing what he calls for us as well in Isaiah chapter 63 in verse number 18. We are called to be the people who are going to possess the holiness of Bible doctrine. This is what he has been calling us. We are called to be the people of his holiness. In Isaiah chapter 63, in verse number 18, if you can look, the people of thy holiness have possessed, and it says, it but a little while, our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. That meant to say what the people of thy holiness were within the church age, if you would call you to be the Alekhine Ketesis, then every believer is that holy possessing believer. That holiness of indwelling Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But you know what we are doing? We are not able to keep up the happiness with our own God first. And we are trying to make other gods to be happy. By that we meant to say we are not obeying the mandates of Bible doctrine first. If Lord God the Father is happy, as he says in Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord of God is our strength. Things would be something brilliant and superb. And he says, the people of thy holiness have possessed it, but it is for a very short time. The word for little time, what we can look at, has been called as mitzah. And that is for a very, very small thing. But Lord God the Father hasn't called you all to enjoy this happiness for a small time. He has called you to keep this happiness with Lord God forever. But how these people are turning out for a small time, how these people are letting out their life into the standards of lies by not keeping the, demand, the demands or the commandments of the Lord of a God forever. He says the simple reason would be the pressure, the pressure upon your viewpoint of life, the pressure upon the thinking process that goes on in your head. Rather than looking upon Lord God the Father who would say, 
all the days of your life you're going to have success and prosperity and happiness if you would obey his mandates the people they are not able to look upon such standards of life but rather they are simply going against the things pertaining to the divine viewpoint and they are happy only to be the human viewpoint and they're possessing it so they have pressure why it is only for a little time why it is only for a little thing why they're not able to conquer out satan why they're not able to trample down satan why they're not able to conquer their own flesh and the world the unholy tree of the devil why it is only for a little while do you think the permanence of lord god the holy spirit is temporary now it's permanent in valley the fellowship has become temporary because you're not able to be the people of his holiness forever you have been simply for a very very short time but no how was not so when lord god the father has mandated him to build the boat or build the ship he is not of that nature to say that he is not of that engineered one that who goes on constantly to be in the process of building the ship so that he can easily do it no but lord god trains him lord god teaches him lord god guides him so he was obedient to that training the same thing over here people to be the holiness of lord god the father it is by the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit where with he guides each and every believer to look and to realize and to understand what exactly he wants through us in us by the knowledge of the word of the lord of god he constantly guides us it is not that we are of the same origin of the holiness We are born in the old sin nature after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we are called to transform ourselves into thinking of bible doctrine and since we have been called to be in such a process of life he would simply exemplify the fact walk in the spirit if ever you breathe breathe in the spirit if ever you are be under the control of the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit and they would simply teach to us to reign in the spirit and the logic is very very simple over there because he's training us up to be something new of a quality that did not exist earlier called to be kinetics the same thing what noah has done it he was not of a nature of a man to know the ship building but his obedience was important the same thing with us as well the way i've been made in the image of god It is lower to be than the image of Jehovah Elohim Himself. Man sinned, and he comes back now to the old sin nature. But after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, man is able to get back to the standards of heavenly realm in his life. In the standards of heavenly realm in his life, he is going to come back to the original thinking of Christ or renovated structure of Christ to be formed in him. So dear brethren every believer has to know that he is something near when something old after he believes in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the old things of the old sin nature they are still abiding in you you have not put to death them yet because you can put them to death only when you are able to preserve or possess that's what the word of here we need to learn he says over here in Isaiah 63:18 the people of thy holiness have possessed what is the meaning of this word possess it is called to be yarash and what is the intention of the meaning of this word yarash what is dominating your thoughts what is influencing your mind if it is the human view point then devil is able to possess in you you know it cannot go to possess your body it has an influence of lies lies itself is devil so it goes to possess you very clearly so the word yarash meant to say what is that that is dominating in your mind or what is that that is actually ruling in your thought process so that your body can go to respond to it so this word arash it is nothing but in order to make yourselves to be 
in the process of a long time or a great time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he would say, the standards of Bible doctrine should dominate your mind. The thinking of Bible doctrine should dominate your mind, but you're going to, but you're going to have that only for a short time, he says. And what is that short time, dear brethren? He would emphasize over here to say the word Yerash is nothing but the believer's inheritance is in heaven. But Satan must be defeated before we obtain it. That is the meaning of your thinking which you need to change. That's why we come every day to train you up to the standards of Bible doctrine because Lord God made man not to die in his nature of unhappiness. If not, you would realize the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, as many people even make the Sunday school children to sing upon that song. Because the three things, first towards self, love, joy, peace. The three things towards the men whom they meet in this life, the opposite ones, that it includes the male as well as the female genders. So what they need to be? He would say, towards them, it will be long-suffering, gentleness and goodness. To the opposite one who go to, whom you are going to meet, including your own siblings or your flesh, whichever may be the offspring of your flesh. And the last three things, what we can find, which are called to be faith, meekness and temperance, the fruit of the Spirit, it is towards God. You just look what God man has designed. How beautiful God has designed man to be in the sense. He should have love, joy, peace. He should have with him long-suffering, gentleness and goodness. He should have faith, meekness and temperance. And then he says, against such there is no law. If you, if you look upon the standards of this word, what Lord God, the Holy Spirit has recorded for us, every man should have love, joy and peace. But do you think he is having love, joy and peace or is able to possess for a long time that? You know why? Because if you are able to honor Lord of a God, Lord God is going to honor you. That's very simple logic. So what is that you need to honor? Is every word of the Lord God to be under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You need to honor it every time. The process pertaining to the honoring work is nothing but to renovate your thinking in the standards of Bible doctrine. Then you are going to get the inheritance, which would say simply you are defeating Satan. You know, the world hates us, as he says, because you are going to reprove the works of Satan. Therefore, we have been stated in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, why the word of Lord God has been given, so that you are thoroughly furnished unto all good works in Christ. Thoroughly furnished. Before the foundation of the world, they have designed to do the good works unto the Lord, says Ephesians 2.10. So I have been called to be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So he says, inheritance for a believer is in the heaven. But Satan must be defeated before we obtain it. So what is Satan? Who is Satan? The very first thing will be your own negative volition towards doctrine to be called as Satan. Because if you are not able to obey the truth of the Lord of a God, you will never realize the importance of the word of God called to be in this church age, particularly under the, mentoring, under, under the controlling mentoring ministry indwelling of Lord God the Holy Spirit. You know why we people are not able to have that great process of life in this earth. Purely, we are not being controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We are not being indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We are not being able to realize the thinking of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. You're just thinking your body is enough, you're glowing outside, it's enough. Now, what is your inner man? You know, you have your family, you think. If anyone is suffering in that family, they think the family members will be happy. In this church age, the family which belongs to Lord God the Father, he is not happy concerning us, he said in Jeremiah 14, 17. That's what we need to look. How the people of him are not able to possess for a long time the holiness. Why they are of a short time, why the enemy is coming down and trotting them out. Though it may be the passage of the millennium or the present or the past. 
Everything what Lord God the Father speaks, it comes to pass. That's what we read in Matthew chapter 1 verse 22 as well. These things have happened because it has been told by the prophets before. The same thing in John chapter 20 when he writes in verse number 21, 31. He says that these things are written that you might believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of Lord God, believing upon him, you must have eternal life. These things have been simply recorded and kept because heaven and the earth will vanish off, but his word will never. He says that word will abide forever and forever. The same thing with his will, the same thing with his work, the same thing with his great priority in this life. Because his intention is none to be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. That's as simple as that. He simply wants every believer to wake up and to realize that his word alone stands good. So when he's saying the people of his holiness have possessed for a little while mitzah, because of the pressures of this life, because of the thinking of this life, man is able to let go the invalid controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Man has become a pure, defeated one before Satan. But you have said now to trample down Satan under your feet. So you need to look what is that possessiveness you have in you. The word possessive meant to say what is the thought process that is happening in your mind. Because Lord God hasn't designed man to suffer with the standards of emotional stress, mental stress, physical stress, or what mannerism of stress that could happen for you on this earth. Lord God hasn't designed man to be in such a way. But rather, if we can look upon those prophets who are called to be the weeping prophets, like Jeremiah, or the great men, where including Paul, he would say, I haven't been worried about only one thing, the men in my care of the pastor teacher, he would say. The daily teachings, what they're going to teach in the pulpits. If we can look upon them, they have become weeping for the sense that they haven't, the people to whom the word of Lord God has been given, they haven't able to fulfill it. You know, what manner they became, if you can look upon in Ezekiel chapter 34, he would say in verse number 17, the false pastor teachers are able to enter into the ministry. He would say that, And as far as you, O my flock, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I judge between the cattle and cattle, between the ram and the he goats. The word cattle meant to say the people under pressure who are going to have great expression of joy in this life, looking and laughing at the taunts or the fiery darts of Satan in their life. Because Satan loves to put pressure, he would come back and laugh and say that pressure is nothing because you know very well the word of Lord God is in you. So you know very well the word of Lord God is in you, so you don't have any pressure at all. The fiery darts of Satan, you would just simply laugh. Because he said, I will divide between the cattle and the cattle who are going to be the standards of the rams, that is, who are going to use LF energy to become a discipleship program in Christ. And between the people who are called to be the he-gods, that is, who constantly have the viewpoint of life under the authority of making every thought to be brought into captivity for Christ, but now they're not able to get that thought into captivity for Christ, they're simply able to look upon the human viewpoint of solutions. The gods are the people who are having the viewpoint and authority to look upon, to make every thought not to be brought into captivity for Christ. These are the gods. The rams are the people wherewith he would say they have been disciples for Christ. He said, I'm going to divide them. Because if they are my cattle, they should have, no matter whatever pressure in this life, they should have a great expression of joy in their life. If they are my cattle, if they belong to me, and we belong to Lord God the Father, because he says in John Isaiah 63, 18, that we are the people of his holiness. We are not just any ordinary creation on this earth. Therefore he said, before the foundation of the world, I have kept you to be holy and blameless for me. Ephesians 1, 4 through 6. I have kept you to be spotless. I have kept you to be my people who are going to be holy and blameless. 
Therefore he says in Leviticus, in chapter 19, Be holy as I am holy. The same thing with Peter in First Peter. Be holy as I am holy. Because you are the people of the standards called to be invisible ones. And we read the word in Hebrews chapter 11 in verse number 27 for the word invisible. It has been called the first thing as tohu. The word aretas, we read it. And the word meant to say unseen. The first one, what they have to not notice in you, that is called to be the fallen angels, that you are a tohu. That means you are going to be designed to have a great expression of joy upon your body. With authority you have been designed. That's what you have been given, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, meekness, goodness, gentleness. First let you have about your own characters, love, joy, peace. Where do you find any sadness over there? Where do you find any things that which are not related with peace and prosperity over there? As your soul prospers in the word of Lord God, so you shall prosper, he says in 1 John 2 or 1 John 3. A third John 3 it has to be, a third John 2 it has to be there. As your soul prospers, so you shall prosper in everything. So he wants every believer to be prospered according to the standards of Bible doctrine. He doesn't want anything else over there. Only as you prosper and advance in the word of Lord God, you're going to enjoy love, joy, peace. Meekness, gentleness, goodness. The things pertaining to the fruit of the Spirit, because he says, first thing, if you have been enduring the invisible, the first quality of that invisible one will be toho. That means he has put upon everybody the authority of happiness. Not through the happiness of the people, what they think, paying tithes, or coming weekly ones, or giving some money, or doing some church works. Not that happiness. That happiness is what your consciousness is able to say. You are satisfied because you have done something, so that you are saying that you have been free from the guilt. No, that is not at all the happiness. The true happiness is when you have been completely walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. The true happiness to Lord God the Father is when, only when you have been involving in His ministry in going and making disciples of all the nations. The true happiness is when, like Noah, you obey. Though Noah doesn't know how to build the ship, he obeys. The same thing with us, true happiness when we come to learn the word of Lord God, when we have been in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when we are able to make up our life in the standards of Bible doctrine, that's the true happiness for us. So that true happiness has been designed for every believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When? And they're able to renovate their thinking. Not to act as if their thinking has been renovated. People are just simply able to think. They're designed for happiness in the sense of giving some tithe. They're designed for happiness for this, for that. No. Even unbelievers have such happiness because they go to give to their gods that happiness. They try to give to him, saying that, Lord, I have this woe, I will pay for you. Lord, I will do this for you. Whatsoever woes they have, whatsoever things they pay. And they think that's happiness to them. No, that's not at all. When they're coming to that invisible Lord of a God, he would say, first character, Tohu, I have put with authority that your body has been designed to be for me as a happiness. Because I reside in that body. Because you have been purchased with a great price. Therefore glorify Lord God the Father in the body. To the spirit which indwelleth in you, he says in First Corinthians 6. That body is my property. I have sealed and kept it until the day of redemption. And you people are thinking that your body cannot be given for happiness. Your body cannot be given for joy or love or peace. You know why? Between your relationship, between that person, God is not happy. For example, wife and husband, God is not happy concerning you both. For example, siblings, God is not happy concerning you both. For example, your parents and you, God is not happy concerning you both. And why you are not happy? Because you are not able to encourage each other to be disciples. You are not encouraging each other to be grammatious. You are not able to encourage to say, come, let's go to the house of the Lord of a God. And as he would say, how beautiful are that, that they come and approach to the things pertaining to the tabernacles of the Lord of a God. 
You're not able to approach. You're not able to encourage. Wife would give a plan to the husband to say, come, let's go make money. Husband would say, come, let's do it. The leader, the head of the house should say, we are shining like the sun. And you should be like the moon. You know why God the Father is not happy? Because the husband is not able to lead the wife in the standards of doctrine. God is not happy pertaining to your any form of relationship with them. Because, for example, you have your unbelieving friends. At least try to be honest with them. Try to be truth with them. You honor the word of Lord God, whether they cheat or let them go to hell, that's, that's none of your business. But you honor the word of Lord God, because as it said, oh, as much as possible, pursue peace. That's what we have been told, pursue peace. But today, father hates the children, children <laughs> hates the father. And they think they've come for peace. No. God the Father hasn't come to give peace. He said, I've come to give fire in Matthew chapter 10. The fire of what? The fire of making two towards three or three towards two because they have to go and do the will of Lord God the Father. Therefore, he would say, you're not going to love your parents more than my work. You're not going to love your siblings more than your works. You're not going to love your own children or wife more than my work. What is number one important? He would say, first, my work, take up your cross and come back and follow me. That's what I want from you. You think I've come to give peace? No, not at all. Because there is a daily weeping day and night. If you can open up to read Jeremiah 14, 17. He says over here, Therefore you shall say this word unto them, Let my eyes run down with tears day and night, and let them not see. That meant to say what you know. Looking upon the way style of your life. Looking upon the way how you are able to live. He says. I am not able to seize the tears from my eyes. That means as long as you have blood in you. Your thought process is not able to grow up. To come back and take up the cross of the Lord God every day. Whenever I look upon you, I'm not happy pretending that. That's what you need to look. The standards of what we're going to call over here. The way process of your life. Your blood that is pumping in you, it is all the time able to go and grievance, squelch and wax and lie and resist Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But it is not able to make me to be happy. So God being unhappy, you think your relationships in this life will be happy. With your wife, can you be happy? With your children, can you be happy? Not at the cost of someone being suffering. And that he is our creator. He is not just someone to be noted. He, with, he, he who has made us. The one who has intended. For example, you make up an object. And that object is not able to fulfill its purpose. You made it. It's not able to be useful for you. Then what are you going to do? Will you be happy with that? Like a robot, if, because if you're going to get now the humanoids, you'd say, no, I'm not happy with that. Will you be happy or sad? But you know why Lord God the Father weeps over here day and night pertaining you? Because he doesn't want to lose your precious soul. You have been made in the Salem image of God. He doesn't want anyone to perish. That's the desire of Lord God the Father. First Timothy 2, 4. None to be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his Bible doctrine. That's the great awesome thing which has designed for us in this church age. Eh? None to be perished. But everyone should come back to the thorough knowledge of Bible doctrine. This is what the intention of Lord God the Father is all about with us. Every time if we can look. He's been able to tell only one thing. Knowledge of Bible doctrine they should have because I don't want them to perish. I want them to have the truth. 
because I want them to possess the people of holiness brand upon them forever, not for a little while. And why it is becoming a little while, Mitsar? Whenever pressure comes in our life, a viewpoint of life has been changed. Your renovated standards of thinking has been changed. You remove from the fear of Lord God into the fear of man, you become panic. Moses didn't do so while he was there in the Red Sea. He waited upon the Lord to guide him. He stood by the Lord to open up the sea to do two, two, two parts. He simply stood. Because that's the way how it's going to be. But the people over there in the same chapter are having a great song of deliverance. They come to rebel. <laughs> the great song of Exodus chapter 15, if you can look upon the last verses, now they have a great song. Because of the water, they go to rebel. That's what man is. He goes to rebel, he changes his viewpoint of life. Because he wants that which is comfortable. If Lord God the Father would be so selfish to see that I shall be comfortable, I will look my own mean life. Where man can stand today, dear brethren. If Lord God the Father is happy with his own life and he would say, these people are not able to glorify me, these people are not able to honor me, these people are not even worthy to be taken upon my tongue, what would I do with them? And if he would simply change the things, and if he would simply make up you all to vanish, what he would do? Because man has become so selfish. In that same chapter of Exodus 15, if you can look, the great song of deliverance which Miriam composes and she sings, and the great words what we look all the time, Yehovah Malak, Olam Olamat. The Lord God shall reign forever and forever. Exodus 15, 18. And if man, for the reason of having water to be, bitter and he wants to change that water he goes to complain against Lord God and he wants to find solutions for that if Lord God the Father if he is so much mean minded and he would say I want every person who has been made in my image who has been made in my image on this earth I want them to glorify me you know that's the great character of my Lord he's a gentle man he gives you evolution dear brethren that's the greatness of my Lord God He's still long suffering. He's still patience. He's bearing. Second Peter three nine because he wants none to be perished. Because he knows where he will be fed tomorrow if you go to be rebellion against Lord God. Therefore, he gives you one more day, one more chance. He gives you warning, discipline. He gives you intensified stage of discipline. He gives you till to the point of death, and that will be the more warning, discipline at that time. Because that's called to be the sin unto death. If you have been not able to recollect back from uh, warning discipline, intensified stage of discipline, really, dear brethren, you cannot be recovered back. These are the two stages of warning for you. Because the fruit of the Spirit of the Lord God has been given for us love, joy, and peace, meekness, goodness, gentleness. If it has been given for that, then where are we happy? Where is the meekness? Where is the gentleness? Where is the goodness? You know why you're not happy? Father in heaven is not happy in of you. It's of Jeremiah 14, 17. He's not at all happy concerning you. He says, this will not cease. Let it not be ceased. Because everyone who has been there over here, he is able to make up his blood not to be pumping towards Bible doctrine. What for your blood is pumping today? Just look. You'll have your majority priority number one in the standards of this, what you can call as your priority lists. Because as a church, Christ our Lord of a God calls to be the wife, and he being the husband, he has a lot of work and a lot of benefits which has given towards this church, which we need to look. He says over here, dear brethren, who made the heaven and the earth in this 
Psalms 136 it has to be the work which the church has to perform. In verse 8 he would say, 136 of verse 8 of Psalm, Sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. You know, the word sun, if you can look, it meant to say that it is the originator, like the husband, like Christ, of a Lord of a God, who has been called to be in Proverbs 11 and 16 as a Ariat's man, a man of a great strength in richness. The church is called in Proverbs 11 and 16 as a gracious woman, woman of grace. The same thing over here after the sun, if you're going to look, it is the moon and the stars, stars being the children. As we look upon the word star in Daniel chapter 12, he would emphasize the people who are going to lead as many as people towards Bible doctrine or convert them, they will be like stars. Because that's what they will be children of this earth, meant to say the earth representing the church or the moon over here, moon representing the, uh, representing the church, the children of the church called to be the stars. This is the analogy of the Old Testament. When you come back to the New Testament, he would say it'll be like angels. Therefore, if you can look upon the chapter in Revelation chapter 3, he would uh, describe the standards of what in verse number 7 we are. He says to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things. Because he said, he that is holy, he that is true, what is, is holy and is true. He that had the key of David, because what is the reason to have the key of David? People may think David's throne. In Isaiah 54, we are reading in verse number 4. He has given us an example of David. Why? He shall be to his people a leader, a witness, a commander. Key of the David are this people of holiness, what we are able to read from Isaiah 63, 18, who are going to possess his life of holiness forever, not for a short time. They will never make the enemy to trample down. That meant to say what? They will never go to grieve or squelch or wax or lie or resist Lord God, the Holy Spirit in this life. But in every time, in everything, they would simply come back and perform the will of Lord God, the Father. That is what they will be associated with every time they come. Only to the will of Lord God the Father, they're going to survive. These are the people of His holiness. And the entire duty is to see that the enemy is not able to trample down the word of the Lord. But today the so-called false pastor teachers have buried Bible doctrine in their pulpits. They are really not able to analyze the word of Lord God in proper exegesis, isagogics and categories. They don't have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher first. Therefore, he would say, I haven't sent them at the man. And people are not even happy to listen to the word of God. We have nothing to do with them, dear brethren, whether they subscribe or unsubscribe. We seldom care about that. They're not here to impress men. We are, impressed. We are here to impress Lord God. If Lord God the Father is happy, by wiping out tears from my part of my life, or at least by the work of my life, I would consider it be a great joy in my life. Because when God made man, he did not want him to shed his tears. And we cannot be happy when Lord God the Father is weeping on our behalf. Therefore he has given for us in the church age to walk breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit accurately. Because he has been holding the keys of David. And the keys of David, what he's been holding, he says, I want that people of holiness in me. We're going to be a witness for the possessing of holiness for a, lot, for a lifetime, till they die. And therefore, in order to have that people of holiness as a brand in our life, he would say, I've given you the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. I've given to you the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So there is nothing that can withhold you back to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, except your negative, stiff-necked, hard-hearted nature not to learn the word of Lord God. You don't have this. The old sin nature which goes on to be in you accurately, dear brethren, if you can look. Therefore, he says, put to death. 
the deeds of the flesh they put to death because they're going to be the all sin nature they go to be against the will of Lord God the Father every time so he says I put you in a new heart a new spirit I have removed out the heart of stone I given the heart of flesh why because the people should realize what is God's weeping nature because of us on this earth not able to keep him happy anyone is happy or not make first God happy let him be happy in your life let him be happy according to circumstances which are going through because you're so faithful in the word of Lord God you're so faithful in performing the will of Lord God let him be happy what else do you need He has to be happy through your lives. But you look and analyze yourselves. Is God the Father happy because of your lives? Though he is the one who has been able to say he is holy. He said he is the true. And he said he is the key of David. And he says if one you open up and you are put into that. Then no man can shut it. But when to say what he has opened us now, the doctrine he has opened up us now to give the Holy Spirit, he has opened us in cow, and now he has given us the completed can of scripture. What he has opened up, no one can shut it. And if ever he shuts that, no one can open it. But the intention of Lord God the Father, if he can look upon the book of Revelation, he would say, let this scroll be opened up, let it not be sealed. But in Daniel 12, he would say, let it be sealed so that they should not know it. That meant to say what the intention of Lord God the Father in this church age is that none to be perished. But they should come back to look and realize and understand the will of Lord God the Father. It's a very, very gracious thing for us that Lord God the Father has given to be in the process of becoming the moon and the stars work. If you can look back that passage over here in, 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 in uh, Psalms chapter 136 in verse number 9, the court, he says, over here in treasury of scripture knowledge, because he goes to give something about the sun and the moon, even the things pertaining to the uh, source of light or the capacity of that light, he would say, the moon and the stars upon that knot, the sun is the monarch of day. That is what Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is for us. Therefore, in Psalms 119, verse 105, we read, the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet. That means you are now going to restore back the doctrine in your life. From Logai, you are going to get Rima. So he says, the sun is the monarch of day, the state of light. The moon is the monarch of night, the state of darkness. The church is placed in such a midst of perverse, crooked nation, as he writes in Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, that they are called to shine forth as light luminaries. You are the people of possessing nature of holiness of Lord God, not for a short time. It's a time for a lifetime, because the way what you're living now in the world, you may think looking upon the sunlight, it's a daylight. No, you're living in the midst of such darkened old, the world which has been ruled by the prince of the power of this air. If you can look upon the other part of your life, if you can look in the standards of angelic conflict, it is absolutely dark. And you are that light luminaries to shine for. You are called to be the light to the world. You are called to be the salt to the world. Therefore, he says in Matthew 10, Confess my name in this earth. The word confess for homologia in the Hebrew it meant to say, Yada on behalf of Nader. Yada is giving thanks. Nader is meant to say to pay the wars. And what is the war that you need to pay? The war of which God the Father has given to go and make disciples of all the nations, not just evangelizing the world. Evangelizing is gynec doctor work. The baby is delivered now. Who has to take care? The pediatric doctor has to take care. You have this work now, the work of going and making disciples to grow up perfect in all wisdom and knowledge of Bible doctrine. You're having such a great pediatric work today. But people are not at all happy. 
They're not happy to look back the pediatric work of Christ. They're not happy to consider that they have to go and make disciples. When they can go and make disciples, when they're capable of producing children for you, how are you going to be producing children when you're grown up, when you're an adult believer? Because the nature is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons. It is crying, weeping bitterly. Romans 8, 16 through 19, if you can look. The creation is awaiting. As the death of an only child in a family, as an only son who has been dead, the way how that family weeps and wails, he says over here in Romans chapter 8, verses 16 through 19, particularly, he said in verse number 19, For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the adult sons of God. The word earnest expectation, it is called to be apo, followed by dokio, in the sense of making as apo kara dokio. That is what it is called to be anxious and persistent expectation. Apo kara dokio. And the word over here for apo kara dokio, it has been called as to be with much twisted or with much anguish or with much anxiety. You know, what does it has been waiting for with such great pain? It wants you people to go and make them to be disciples. That's the meaning. Not just giving them evangelism, not just giving them the good news. Telling smooth words to say while they are hunger rather than feeding them the food. They are still hunger itself. The hunger is not cleared. How the hunger of the soul can be cleared? When there is proper teaching. When Noah has been obedient to the word of Lord God, and Lord God the Father trained him for the will of Lord God, then how much more we should be obedient to do the will of Lord God today? We could be no better than stupid people on this earth. In spite of given to us to be the possessing of His holiness, in spite of making us to be the people of the Lord's mind. What's raining? What's running in your head? Apart from stupidity, is there anything else? Then how we could be the possessing people of the Lord God, Yarash? He said, Believer as inheritance in the heaven, provided for Satan has to be defeated on the earth. How Satan can be defeated? By the word of the Lord God. To be aware about the cunning fables of Satan. To look upon the strategy of Satan, how it, how it goes to defeat you, how it goes to deceive you. And if you are not aware about the strategy of Satan, then what will be your life? What for it will be worth for? Because you are not going to get inner tents in the heaven. Then what is struggling over here on this earth? To make your places on the earth to be inherited? As Christ, our Lord of God, was being challenged by Satan to say, Bow down to me, I will give you all the world. He said, Get behind this, Satan. My pleasure is not to make properties on this earth. My pleasure is to make the name of my Lord God to be honored and shined on this earth. I will make his name to be instilled over here on this earth. As a desire of Numbers 14.21, the earth shall be filled with the glory of Lord God the Father. That should be the burning desire of every preacher. That should be the burning desire for every believer. You have kept away here, alive over here, not for the purpose of going and making money on this earth or properties on this earth. Because heaven and the earth will vanish off, but they that do the will of Lord God the Father will alone abide. Mark it very well, dear brethren. There is no happiness for you in this life with your wife, with your children, with your parents, with your siblings, with any one of your friends and relatives. Because when you consider one-to-one -one relationship between you and God the Father, between you and God the Father, that meant to say you, meant to say you both, whether it may be wife and husband or children, whichever, because one time you can be with only one person. It will be associated to the standards of being 
one at a time. We cannot have multiple at a time, one at a time. So between you and them, how is the Dharmat from a witness before you and God? Is God weeping because of your relationship? Because as a husband, you're not promoting her to come back to the church. You're not making her to do the will of Lord God the Father. As a wife, you're not making him to do the work of Lord God the Father. Do you think Lord God the Father is happy on your behalf? If he's not happy, do you think you will have joy upon your face? Or you'll have peace? When Abraham was being asked to sacrifice his only son to test what was in his heart, he did not hesitate. He is called to be the father of faith. Every husband should be in a way to cut off everything that goes to be a hindrance for the work of Lord God. And that wife will be really happy and blessed one. Because she's encouraging her husband to do the Lord's work first. Because on behalf of them to be the corporate witness, Lord God the Father in heaven is happy. With the wicked be the wicked, win the wicked. With the crooked be the crooked, win the crooked. With the fools be as fools, win the fools. With the wise be as wise, win the wise. In Acts chapter 15, the great discourse pertaining to the circumcision, they say, no, in Acts chapter 16, Apostle Paul goes to circumcise Titus, right? because he wants to win them back to Christ, to Titus or Timothy. He was a Greek. He wants to make them to realize the area where he's going to serve. If they would ask the circumcised, you want to say, yes, the proof. With the fools, he was a fool. So the mission was only one thing burning in his nature and his life. God should be happy on behalf of his life. God should be satisfied by the work of his life. God should be pleasant by the standards of his life. But Lord God the Father is happy. Nehemiah says in chapter 8 in verse number 10, The joy of the Lord of a God is my strength. We are not making Lord God to be happy and we are thinking we can have happy relationships on this earth having though to be wished by millions of people on your birthday. Or on the day which you would say, good morning, let's have a good time, Tob. <laughs> no, dear brother, you cannot have good because God the Father is not happy on your life. Every family is over here, every church over here, every pulpit over here. But the so-headed called pastor teachers, they have to wake up. They should realize, is God the Father happy? Is he been happy by the way of your life? Because he's the one who has the key to hold of David. What he opens, no one can shut. What he shuts, no one can open. Because he's holy and true. And he wants his progeny to be holy and true. This progeny was going to possess the holiness of Lord God. <coughs> this progeny we shall have not for a little time, but for a long time. This progeny we shall not make enemy to trample down. And this progeny which goes to give a judgment between the rams and the he-goat. You know why you're going to become a he-goat? When Lord God the Father would judge you between the goats and the he-goats of Ezekiel chapter 34. In verse number 17, he would say, I will judge, the word judge, judgment to say mishpat. I will look the thought process. I will look upon them out. I will look up into the standards of what is there in their soul. I know that very well, so I'm going to walk. I'm going to look upon them in such a way. So he says, I will judge. And then he would further tell over here, dear brethren, to emphasize that seemeth it a little thing unto you that you have eaten up the good pasture, but you have treaded down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and you have drunk of the deep waters, but you have foul the residue with your feet. You know, what does it mean to say? People are not able to even eat good food and good water, but the pastor teacher is able to eat good food and good water. The residue, what he's doing, he's fouling it up with his leg. 
The sad part is in the present Christendom, the pastors who do not know exegesis, isagogics, or categories, who have to go to the process of iota upon iota, kera upon kera, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept. We have been entering into our pulpits. He would say about them, they have defiled the good doctrine and the good ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, food represents to the Word of God, what it represents to the Holy Spirit of God. You have taken the deep waters, but what I have done, you have fouled up. That means you have distorted. You have made them to stuck in the mud rather than rooted in the soil for the word of Lord God. You have made them not to have the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. So what are you going to do? You are going to tread down with your feet. And when they're able to trade down with the feet, God the Father would come for judging. And he says in verse 19, And as for my flock, they eat that which I have trodden down, that which I have corrupted, and they drink that which I have been fouled up. And therefore he says, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will judge between the fat cattle and the lean cattle. The fat cattle are the ones who are going to renovate their head in the standards of Bible doctrine. The lean cattle are the ones who have failed to dig and take the word of Lord God accurately. These are the lean cattle meant to say the standards of people who are nominal, conventional Christians. These are the lean cattle-oriented believers. And such lean, such lean cattle-oriented believers are rampant to the core rather than fat. Because the fat cattle are going to develop their body to be associated for renovating of Bible doctrine. Why do you think you have your body on this earth? If you would ask them, they would say only to learn the word of God. That will be the answer. The lean cattle, what, why do you think you have this body? They would say, we don't know. They would say, we are paying weekly ones to the church. They would say, we are able to learn the word of God weekly ones enough. And we love to have prosperity and blessing and happiness in our life. At the cost of Lord God the Father being weeping over there. Do you think you'll have it? No, oh dear brother, you will not. Lord God the Father is not happy because of the things which we are performing in the church. The church has become more worst than the lean. Why it becomes lean? Because... There is no truth. The truth is being hindered. When there is no taste of knowing the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. When there is no taste to dig and take and show to the people. When there is no proper analyzing of the word of Lord God with the pictographical representations of Bible doctrine. When there is no proper teaching of the word of Lord God. That's what he said. Where the people will perish because the people will not have proper teaching of Bible doctrine. In Proverbs chapter 22. The wrong translation for vision. It is not vision. Where there is no proper revolution of Bible doctrine there the people will perish. In Hosea he says, my people are destroyed. For what? For lack of knowledge. Today, people are not able to be the possessive of holiness for a lifetime, but are only for a little time. Why? Because you're going to look upon the pressures that comes in your life and you let go the word of Lord God. You let go to carry the cross of Lord God every day. And that Lord God the Father is going to judge between the cattle, which is fat and which is lean. The fat cattle, they dig and take every day the word of Lord God. The lean cattle, they forsake to dig and take the word of Lord God. As you simply forward in your WhatsApp status, some of the biblical messages or the biblical verses without even knowing the intention, the power of that, or the accurate meaning of that. And the sad part is these are Christians. And they would look and tell to the world, by deteriorating the standards of thinking, not even to get associated at least to the minimum version of KJV. And they have their own translations which could lead, deteriorate, 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 which is no way concerned to the original language of the scriptures. 
if KJV itself is to such a such an extent which is called to be worst in translation, because the viewpoint of Hebrew and Greek in comparison to the internal scriptures is something far away great, then what would be the lower standards of translations what these people are trying to keep in their mind every time? What it would be? Yet Noah was not disobedient. He never rebelled. He said, Lord, here I am, I will do thy will. The church has also been called now in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the indwelling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. To say, here I am, do the will of Lord God, the Father. That's it. That's what the church has been called today to do it. If the church is not able to do it, then we will be the people of sheer ruts of all time, weeping and wailing and gnashing of your teeth. Because Lord God is not happy pertaining to the church and to the great gracious benefits which has given to the church in this church age. Though we don't deserve or earn or work for it, he has given to us the best. And has designed man to have love, joy and peace. Not to be ending up in your emotional stress, mental stress, agony of your stress. The agony, the mental stress, the emotional stress which you are going through. Just imagine and compare to the stress which Christ, O Lord of our God, He says in Jeremiah 4.17, Day and night I shall weep and this shall not be seized in my life. Then who will be the people to stand in the gap for the Lord God and make it to become as a halted one for the Lord, as Elias was? His son Phineas, who goes to stop that plague by putting a javelin. And with him, Lord God the Father established a covenant of peace. Who is going to stand for me to make seize my weeping day and night? And at the cost of Lord God the Father weeping day and night has to use the word anthropomorphically or anthropopathism. Can you be happy? Just look your life. Are you happy? At the cost of grieving and squelching and waxing and lying and resisting to Lord God, the Holy Spirit, are you happy? You're called to be the heavenly citizens. You're not of this earth. You're called to be something great in this church age. You're not at all of this earth. Will God the Father be happy on your behalf? Will God the Father be absolutely saying to the court, as he said to Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, because we will be the beloved son's wife, like the moon which goes to operate. If the sun has 50,000 times of brightness, the overshadowing of that upon the earth, you know, it's not just the earth to be evangelized, it is an impact which goes on to be to the angelic conflict as well. The rays of the sun, which the earth is so small, it can easily overlap the earth. And that reflected over one will be the sun rays which goes on to be with the moon. And if the intensity of the sun is 50 times, 50,000 times, the moon has been called to reflect only once of that. That meant to say what? 10,000 myriads of the things what have been recorded for us in the Bible, he would say, I've given you to just preach and teach the standards of my mind at least once. I've given you great depths like the sun 50,000 times, which is greater. But the moon is not able to take that light, not only just on the earth to represent the glory of Lord God, but even in this angelic conflict, which is your pleasure to do it. Because, dear brethren, if you can look upon this concept of the sun, in Psalms 136, in verse number 9, the note which has been recorded, <coughs> he would say over here, The sun is the monarch of the day, the state of light, the moon of the night, the state of darkness, the rays of the sun falling on the atmosphere are refracted and diffused over the whole of the hemisphere of the earth immediately under this orb. 
while those rays of that vast luminary which because of the earth's smallness in comparison with the sun are diffused on all sides beyond the earth falling on the opaque disk of the moon are reflected back on the lower hemisphere or the path of the earth opposite the sun but the reflected light being 50,000 times less in intensity than that of the sun, there is a sufficient distance, distinction between day and night, though each is ruled and determined by the one of these two great lights. God the sun provides the sunlight. The earth should reflect the moonlight. So, dear brethren, if you are not able to pause us to be the people of holiness, the problem is with you. Because your priorities are not to obey like know how obeyed, and not to seek and search the truth, as you have to seek and search the Lord's mind every day. And yet how many days more you still want to reject the will of Lord God the Father you think upon, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us, to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head, bowed, eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the motive to the official and eternal truth. The eternal truth for so very simple, believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the grace man is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, the we teach learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the past, we teach us the great matters to carry so thon lagan. Herald the word in season out of sin, because the Dharma witnesses, where it have been called. The number one Dharma my witnesses in wearing Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic course will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious praise. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, we grateful from thank you for the privilege to have fellowship through the Word. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, challenge and equip us for the betterment of our lives to keep you happy rather than ending our lives in sadness. To the section, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.